This is crazy, cause personally, I am not a huge fan of sequels, yet I feel like I'm getting deja vu with this story I'm about to tell you, cause I can't help but feel like I've heard this storyline before, okay. especially during Lonzo Ball's rookie year, three years ago. So what's going on guys, your boy Mike here, and before we get to the content, I just want to let you guys know that I have three PS5s to give away, whether you're an old sub or a new sub, if you subscribe and turn on my notifications, you have entered for a chance to win a PlayStation 5. Now, if you want additional entries, we're gonna be giving away a couple of those PS5s away on Instagram and Twitter as well. And also I highly recommend you follow us on Instagram and Twitter because I typically feature my followers on Insta and Twitter's takes on the content. And a special shout out to Dusa, the real one, Dark Knight 8701 and Jacoby Woods for joining as Mike Mafia soldiers. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Guys, if you remember when Lonzo Ball was selected with the second overall pick in the 2017 NBA draft, LeVar Ball would be consistently in the headlines for going after his son's head coach on the Lakers, which was back then, it was Luke Walton. He would say stuff like, you can see they're not playing for Luke anymore. Luke doesn't have control of the team no more. They don't want to play for him. That's a good team who have lost nine straight games. Nobody wants to play for him. I can see it. No high fives when they come out of the game. People don't know why they're in the game. He's too young. He's too young. He ain't connecting with them anymore. You can look at every player. He's not connecting with one player. And then he continued to say Lonzo looked good, but he also looked disgusted. He was ready to play four minutes left in the first quarter. He dunked it, getting in a flow, and coach sits him down, sat him down. Now the game goes from four points to 10 to 15 to 20. I don't know what they're doing. If he's ready to play, let him play. Don't try and monitor no minutes, put on restrictions. But here's something cute as well, and I know this doesn't have to do much with the content, but in the very same article, LeVar also predicted that LeBron James was going to come to the Lakers that offseason, and he had this to say, LeBron's coming to LA, I know he's coming to LA, he's not a fool, what's the only way he can beat Jordan? He needs to get more championships, and he's going to do that by getting to the Lakers. Now granted, he thought he was going to do that by teaming up with his son Lonzo, but I still thought that was really interesting. Now, when Lonzo was asked back then how he felt about his head coach he didn't exactly give luke walton the best endorsement are you fine with luke being your coach i mean do you do you like him as a coach i play for anybody and unfortunately for lonzo this was the wrong thing to say because there wasn't a head coach that really supported lonzo and gave him the best scheme to succeed like luke walton did as a matter of fact, Luke Walton has a remarkable system for Lonzo Ball where he prioritized pace and tempo. So did Alvin Gentry. And neither of those really worked out for Lonzo unlocking his game. But regardless, in terms of fit, those were the best opportunities he had in terms of schematic fit. And it's really interesting because I'm getting a sense of deja vu over here because if you guys have been paying attention through this very short NBA season thus far, LaMelo Ball has been performing remarkably, averaging 11.5 points per game, 6.4 total rebounds per game, six assists per game, shooting 40% from the field, and 32.4% from three, with a 69% free throw percentage. He even has contributed 0.7 win shares so far. This is all while only playing 24.6 minutes per game and coming off of the bench. Now, granted, LaMelo also is averaging 2.3 turnovers per game. And well, LeVar Ball had something to say about that as well. Melo and all my boys are like this, man. They, you plan for somebody, you, you go ahead, you don't sulk and you don't do that. You just go ahead and go with that. My thing is, he ain't happy with that, but he ain't gonna show that. I, if I train you to be the best and always, you've been starting all your life, here's what they don't get. My boys are not freaking role players. They superstars, let them do what they do. But if your mentality ain't like that, 
guess what? It's hard to coach my boys and tap into the best because you don't have a killer mindset. Now, back then, Luke Walton chose to ignore what LeVar Ball would say, but James Borrego was a little bit more outspoken and directly responded to what LeVar Ball said. Now, before I show you that, we need to address some of what LeVar Ball said in this commentary because... He says that Lonzo Ball and LaMelo Ball and LiAngelo Ball, his boys, are not role players. And the unfortunate thing is, Lonzo Ball was placed in a situation to succeed with the Los Angeles Lakers. He started for the Lakers. He was viewed as a potential franchise cornerstone for the Los Angeles Lakers. And he had pretty he had a pretty good team as well. There was a year where he had LeBron James as a teammate. He had some solid pieces around him. And the one thing that has been plaguing Lonzo throughout the entirety of his career is there are times where he's passive when he should not be passive. And until he learns that lesson, I believe that he is a role player because even when he got traded to the Pelicans, when he had an opportunity to grow with a new team, he still was treated as a role player. And recently, he hasn't been playing as well. He's been getting outperformed by Nikhil Alexander-Walker, who's been coming off of the bench. And things aren't looking good for Lonzo Ball. I'll also always defend LeVar Ball because I feel like he's just trying to be a supportive parent. And I think that's very admirable and apparent. But micromanaging your son's careers just really gives them more roadblocks than not. It's more noise that they have to learn to tune out. And I just don't think it's healthy for him to do that while his sons are just trying to have their NBA careers. Now, when we pay attention to LaMelo, whose career is going really well so far, his issue is LaMelo Ball's coming off of the bench, and he doesn't want LaMelo Ball to be perceived as a role player. Currently, LaMelo Ball leads all rookies in assists, rebounds, and steals 15 games into his career. He recently broke Markel Fultz's record, who broke Lonzo Ball's record for youngest player to ever post a NBA triple-double, and has been a human highlight reel and is an extremely marketable name as well. I personally am watching a lot more Hornets games this year just because LaMelo Ball's on the roster. But here's what his head coach had to say about LaMelo Ball, and let me know how you feel about the course of action that James Borrego elected to take with LaMelo Ball as opposed to how Luke Walton dealt with LeVar Ball when he had Lonzo on his roster. Because James Borrego said that if you're turning the ball over five times in 16 minutes, that ain't going to cut it for me. If you're doing that on the offensive end, you better be bringing something defensively. He had a stretch where he played extremely well. We need to find that again. He's got to get better, bottom line. He's engaged. He wants to get better. He's capable of handling it. But last night, there was poor decision making with the ball. And I think that affected him on the defensive end. I personally love this because James Borrego is still challenging LaMelo Ball, despite LaMelo Ball seeing on social media that he's clearly killing it on the offensive end. James Borrego is challenging LaMelo to do more and get even better on the defensive end. And I think that's remarkable for LaMelo Ball's development. So let me know in the comment section down below, whose side are you on here? Do you believe LaMelo Ball should get more meaningful minutes? or do you think that James Borrego has a good point here? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.